every glove tells a story. It has its own history. And sure, there have been many styles and variations over the years, but the one thing that will never change is the connection between that specific glove and the man who wore it. This week's guest is artist Sean Kane, and he recreates those connections through his art to embrace the unique character of each glove, enhancing it with his portraits and typography to create a one-of-a-kind keepsake for a true fan. This is a true connection of sports and art, and this is Sports Art Spotlight. Sean, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to uh, to meet up with me today and to, to discuss what you do. I appreciate it. Thanks for inviting me. Pleasure to meet with you and uh, to have a chat today. Absolutely, man. So came across your artwork on on Instagram and I immediately was hooked. I, I love what you do. It's such a unique angle for sports art. So I want you to tell me, how did you get into, first off, art in the first place? Have you always been an artist your whole life? Were you a sports fan before you were an artist or how did those two kind of, you know, collaborate and meet up in that way? Yeah, I think um, I was probably an artist first as a kid, just always drawing and uh, always had a pencil in my hand. Spent a lot of time at my grandparents as a kid, and that's probably where I started following baseball. I would I would watch Cubs games in the afternoons at my grandparents' house back in the day baseball era, and uh, was drawing the the players. And so I think probably art came a little bit earlier, but baseball and sports was following quickly on its coattails and then uh kind of went from there as a, I remember as a little leaguer I would always get the the batting helmets at like the the fair or you know the old school batting helmets that we would be able to collect and I would I would repaint them like I had a Cubs one when I was a Cubs fan but I really love the Montreal Expos helmets so I got out my like model paints and I painted a Expos helmet so I think the seed was planted pretty early for me to be using uh, baseball equipment in my artwork. So, Did you go to school for art as well? My uh, degree is in communications. And then I did go on to uh, study art in univer- at university. So um, a mix of the communication side and the, and the uh, more formal art training as well. So how did you make the transition from, I'm assuming when you started doing portraits, uh, it was on a canvas or what, you know, did you start immediately going right towards the baseball gloves? Uh, no, it was definitely a, a progression from uh, my work as a commercial illustrator started back in the mid nineties out of university, uh, working for publishers, a bunch of them you named and uh, various settings that my illustration work would appear on much more um, graphic, playful, not realistic at all. So, um, but the interest in portraiture has been there since art school days and, and before that, kind of my first love and didn't really have a way to apply that to commercial illustration. So it was kind of something left for the si- uh, on to the side. But then um, when I got the idea to do work involving baseball gloves, it was also kind of cartoon- cartoony, graphic, playful, and it was only like 10 years after that when I finally refined the concept and realized that, hey, wait a second, this would be a great venue and setting for me to apply the portrait work that I'd really love to do. Um, and it's, it's turned out to be a, a fun ride for sure. Using the sandbox of a baseball glove as, as this confining design um, structure basically tell me about the process right between do you find the glove first do you find the sports athlete first or how do you decide which athlete's going to go on what type of glove and i'm sure there's a lot of research involved in this oftentimes there is i love what so for me the gloves are are kind of a stepping stone to telling this player's story or at least a a window or a doorway to enter to start to learn about a player. And so when, um, when I begin thinking about or I'm approached to, to paint a glove featuring a particular player, I instantly think about finding a glove from the era that they played in, Sense. for sure. Um, the hand that they caught with, you know, if they're righty or lefty, the position they played. And instantly with those three things kind of checked off, I've got this object that already is starting to tell their story very uniquely. On top of that, 
they might not necessarily have used, obviously, a signature model glove with their own name on it. But oftentimes, I'll find a, a Johnny Bench glove, a mitt. And well, that's kind of fun to put a Johnny Bench portrait on a Johnny Bench signature mitt, things like that. So that kind of drives a lot of the the, the decision making for me as far as what glove to, to use. Occasionally, I have found a glove first and thought, awesome, I've been wanting to paint so and so, and I finally got the glove. And so in for me, that was finding a uh, early on, maybe eight, nine years ago, was finding a glove that was ideal for a shoeless Joe Jackson painting um, that got really, um, really got the ball rolling with a lot of collectors and myself. And then I waited for years to find the right mitt to paint Lou Gehrig on. And finally, I found a 20s, 1920s mitt for a left-handed thrower. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of all came together. And I've, I finally felt like, okay, now I can paint him. He was someone I wanted to paint like on an early list of, right. Of players but it's got to be i can't do a you know um a 1990s rawlings for a right hander it just doesn't right. make sense so and then they have like a built-in patina they have e even if it's a newer glove it, it it's already telling a story of like oh that's what gloves look like in the 90s or the 70s or you know each era has its own kind of signature to the look of the equipment so are, are you a collector of sports memorabilia? Because to me, that seems like you're almost going on a journey and diving into this world of sports memorabilia, the people that you're interacting with, the people that you're dealing, making deals, mm -hmm. buying, selling, trading, artwork, whatever it may be. But the journey itself to find the gloves is almost, uh, you know, a, a whole nother separate part that people don't even think about. It's, it's, a, it's a huge part. Sometimes I get really lucky and... I guess from technically speaking, I am a memorabilia collector because I've got probably 30 gloves just in my collection that right. are kind of waiting. Those things um, aren't cheap either, it. right? <laughs> they do vary in price. Um, of course, like everything, it's amazing. Sometimes a 1980s Rawlings infielder's glove can be more than a glove from 1920. Wow. It, it all depends. Part of what I, why I chose this, this medium for my canvas is I just love the handmade. I just love gloves. Ever since I was a kid painting on my helmets, I was also playing with my dad's old Richie Ashburn gl glove that he handed down to me. And I've always loved the craftsmanship. I always loved the smell, the feel. And, you know, you know, gloves are aside from our, maybe our transistor radio we were saving yeah. up for and our bicycles, they were the, that was the trinity of childhood is yeah. to have those three things, your glove, your, your bike and your radio. Absolutely. And, and so they're very personal, right? You put your hand in them, you catch with them. You don't want anybody else playing with them. Yeah. And I, I just love all those, all those qualities of them. So I, I guess technically uh, I have a collecting habit. Yeah. It's gloves and, and they're, <laughs> they're cool. beautiful. They're beautiful. The other a uh, fun part about where I get the gloves from is from people who send me their childhood gloves or their grandparents' gloves. And mm -hmm. those will have, there's grandpa's childhood address. And I just think I'm just blessed that people send me these, these meaningful objects in their lives. And they ask me to somehow uh, feature their favorite player, or in some cases, family member. I've painted, you know, non-baseball players on these gloves. And it's so cool to see like the address that they wrote in there when they were 12 or 10 or whatever. And, um, and then get the random one that I don't know who it's yeah. from, but it's like, Oh, I feel like, um, they don't have, I don't know. They have some spirit to them, I think. And I'm trying to like not, um, degrade what I'm, I'm being given to paint and actually enhance it. And I, I do go out of my way not to paint on things that are inherently collectible of on their own mm -hmm. um because i know there's a big faction of the collector world that it's like don't paint on that you know i'm like i get it i'm That's not me, I'm, right? yeah, <laughs> yeah if, if it's if it's dry and dry and gross and in the bottom of some basement box that i'll take it that's that's the one i want um i don't want to paint on something that's a game used whatever you know yeah. that's it's a lot of fun it's it that's where um 
different from the, being an illustrator, which I still do about a third of my business is still doing commercial illustration work, but the connections that I've made over the last 10 to 12 years doing the baseball work mm -hmm. is so meaningful. Um, I get real insights and connections with collectors, with other people in the, in the baseball collecting world. And I'm getting like, I'm getting like the Christmas newsletter from my collectors. I'm getting pictures of their grandkids playing little league or a call and say, Hey, what are you working on lately? And it's just fun. It's really been um, a blast to, to do this. And to have somebody like you be able to put that into something that they can physically look at. It's a conversation piece. It's storytelling. It's, you know, it's so personal to them that immediately you guys are connected, you know, like it's, it's yeah. an immediate connection. So that must be very rewarding for you to yeah. be able to build some of those connections and give these gifts to some of these people. It's one of the perks of the job for sure. So I, I do want to ask you, so you've been doing this for quite a while. How long have you been specifically doing the glove painting? The first time I got the idea was in 2001. And it sat for 11 years. Wow. Um, I, I did a glove. I brought it to spring training in Phoenix. It was, uh, I lived in Seattle at the time and Ichiro was coming to the league. And that was his first spring training. And it was also Tony Gwynn's last spring training. And the Padres and the Mariners shared uh, camp facilities. And I wanted to see both of them. And I was also like, I don't want to break the ice with other fans. Like, what can I do? And I saw a glove in my office in between painting projects and i was like just did a crazy painting on it brought it with me and within five minutes of the very first day i'm standing next to tony Gwynn. And he's like oh what is this this is cool and he signed it for me and i was like all right this is great I, it hung in my office for a dozen years or 10 years or so and it was the one thing that people always commented on when they came into my studio and then finally you know i was like hitting 40 ish and i was like i gotta do something like what what can i do differently and like that that might be something. So that's kind of how it started and then how it kind of evolved a bit. And so, yeah, it's been about 11 years or so now um, as kind of like the main thrust of my art uh, practice. And and now you've got your work featured in the Baseball Hall of Fame, right? I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. What was that like for you? How did how did they get in touch with you? How did that process work? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. I mean, there aren't too many sub 100 little league hitters that have any connection to the <laughs> hall of fame. So um, it was never going to be with a bat. So with the paintbrush is fine. Um, they, there's a, a painting that, um, that I created featuring Dizzy Dean that is in the permanent collection. Um, the art collection at the museum in Cooperstown, I think has about 1700 pieces. And so I'm flattered and proud to have one of my paintings there. That process came about, um, they had uh, a vote, their collections department, they were considering objects to add to their collection and they voted to have this piece um, go into the collection. Um, did you know that that was happening beforehand? Was there, did you see yeah, there was, that? There was, okay. Yeah, there was some things that were, that were um, shared with them that I knew were being considered, but it was, it was pretty cool. It was pretty neat. And my parents were proud and they're excited. And yeah, so uh, it was fun. My family, my two kids and my wife and I, we uh, drove over. It's about five or six hours from where I live and got to talk with um, Jeff Idelson and, and, and present the, the artwork to him and had a fun day getting a little bit of a tour and talking with the curators there that I had worked with in preparing the work to be part of the collection. And um pretty neat yeah and they they were very candid and and said that in all of their years they've seen all kinds of painted stuff balls and bats mm -hmm. this this curator who had been there for 25 years said she had never seen a painted glove before which i thought was amazing that was that was really cool to hear so that is yeah and that's why i think it's so unique like when i like i said when i came across your stuff i was like how has nobody thought to do this before it's such a cool idea and it, it just, like you said, it's, there's one thing to paint a ball. I've seen plenty of people paint balls and, you know, do sports cars and things like that. But like you were saying, the glove tells a story and to match that glove with the athlete just enhances it. And it's such a cool, unique art form. So who would be some of your favorite pieces that you've painted? What, what would you say is your favorite glove or 
athlete that you've painted that you've gotten a chance to encounter with or meet or maybe have signed the glove. Tell me a story of like uh, sure. you know, when you were kind of with somebody and just saying, wow, I can't believe that I'm meeting this person or, or that type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, two. W w one isn't someone I met, but is a painting that I'm really proud of that really felt like I was pushing this medium that I'm, that I've chosen to work in. And that was a, a two glove painting of um, Don Larson's perfect game. And I was able to locate a Don Larson signature model glove and a Yogi Berra signature model mitt. And I placed them one on top of the other and tried to tell the story of that whole game with a two glove painting and has the famous iconic Yogi jumping into um, Don's arms as like the focal point yeah. and it spans the two gloves. It was just, it felt like a real creative um, a leap to, to like, Oh, I don't have to limit myself to one glove. So um, that's one I'm really proud of and, and happy with how it's turned out. The other one speaking to someone who I've met and painted and it's gotta be um, Andre Dawson who um I did something for Cal Ripken and his foundation. And um, I went to the event in, in Baltimore and Andre was there. He saw the glove that I created and it prompted him to call me. So I grew up in Chicago. I'm a Cubs yeah. fan. Yeah. So when I picked up the phone and said, this is Andre Dawson. <laughs> and I was like, okay, this is awesome. And yeah. uh, just a, a wonderful person, just a, a wonderful guy. Uh, very supportive of art and artists, I think. And um, so I created a glove for him. And then he happened to be doing uh, a signing, like right after I delivered it to him. I didn't even know he was going to be there like a few weeks later. And so I got to connect with him and uh, we had a nice chat. And uh, he said he loved it so much. I think it was initially intended to be a gift for someone, but he said he liked it so much he's going <laughs> to keep it for himself. And like... <laughs> No, no more flattering thing Absolutely, for an artist yeah. than that. And also, um, I sometimes am hesitant to meet players that I really liked as a kid or whose work I collected. There's a mystique there that my 12 year old per brain wants to stay mysterious and, and right. there's never been idols, right? You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, and I, I'm an adult, right? We're like not that much younger than them in a lot of ways. And, it's also like a business relationship. So I'm not asking for autographs. I'm not doing any of that. Um, so it's just like a perk to find out like, Oh, this is actually another like really kind human being who mm -hmm. just happens to be able to hit us, you know, fastball and all these other great things, but just a, a really cool person and uh, really helpful to me. Um, and uh, so, yeah, definitely would, I have to be Andre. Andre. That's very yeah. cool. Very cool story. Yeah. Man. I like it. Uh, now, you do have, you don't just paint full gloves, right? You have this new project that you've been working <laughs> on. I want you to tell me a little bit about these these custom portrait cards that you've been i've seen them around i've seen a couple yeah, of people yeah. a couple of my friends actually have when you did a, a, a one from my buddy chris it was a mike schmidt one and he's been showing it That's all right. everywhere so you know I, i'm yeah. really i'm really interested to learn a little bit more about yeah. this yeah so uh i call them portrait cards they are portraits on vintage leather or classic baseball glove leather that's been uh, retired and I'm repurposing them reusing them these are pieces of leather that I'm actually getting from someone who is, is making wallets and other products out of gloves I've and these seen are the, those, yeah yeah so these are the by I, I reached out to a couple of these guys I said what are you doing with the old with the leather from the webs uh -huh. that you're not using for your products and he's like I've got a milk crate full of this stuff I'll send it to you so I'm not cutting up stuff i'm getting stuff from other people that have cut things up and i'm repurposing them and so they're mounted on baseball card size um mat board so they're two and a half by three and a half inches and um basically again like designing around what is this piece of leather like it's got a lace on it, it's got a hole in it let's kind of feature that work around that figure out how to get a little portrait on there and again, like kind of tell a story a little bit. I can't, it's not as full as a, uh, as a glove, of course, but kind of a pandemic idea as well. Mm -hmm. Like the, the card collecting craze kind of seemed to pick up. People haven't been able to collect my work because the full size gloves are at a price point that unfortunately 
for a lot of collectors is beyond their means. Right. I get that. These create an opportunity for me to paint more players, which I've been wanting to do, which I don't get to do because the gloves take a long time, yeah. 120 hours sometimes overall with looking for the gloves and the research and the hand lettering design and portrait painting. It just adds up. These are a lot smaller. I, I can do more of them. I can create more paintings, satisfy more collectors at a price point that's like a tenth of a full-size glove. And they're just as much fun because I'm getting people like our friend, mutual friend who loves Mike Schmidt. I'm like, great. He can finally buy something. And I, you know, th- so many people have been so kind and, and complimenting me on the work, but not able to have something of mine for themselves. And now they're in the card collecting case. They're the thickest case that I can find because <laughs> I'm, I'm sandwiching a lot of yeah. stuff into that case. And they're, they're just fun. They're, they're fun to, to make. And um, I've been able to uh, partner with um, the Hall of Fame in Canada where I live and they sell some of these in their, in their shop. Um, they're great to partner with like for giveaways and to like, do like fundraising events. I get asked a lot to donate things. So this is a, an object that's easier for me to let go of and to help kind of spread the love a little bit. So nice. yeah, they're, they're, they're fun, fun. And you're hitting a whole nother market too of card collectors, right? Exactly. Exactly. And I've been to the national show a number of times as a guest, uh, like a media um, right. booth kind of guest. And I found that my work on the gloves is kind of an in-between thing. It's not quite, Uh, a piece of vintage uh, baseball equipment. It's not quite a baseball card. And I get a lot of people going by like, what are you doing? What is this? (laughs) But now, like you say, these definitely, they fit the format of a card. And that was a friend of mine who, who suggested that to me. I was going to do smaller paintings, but he said, if you get them down to card size, I think you'd really hit a sweet spot. And, um, yeah, it's been fun. I've probably done 50 or 60 this year alone. How long do those take yeah. you compared to the full-size ones? Uh, probably about 8 to 10 hours okay. total from like work. Yeah. Find it's still a lot of work cuz I'm still having to find photos, find, you know, doing the type design, putting the card together, sourcing the leather. Yeah. There's still a lot of steps involved. And then I love to package it up and make it like you're getting a gift. Like mm-hmm. it's not just you're not ripping open an envelope in this card case falls out it's it's like this unraveling you're like it's it's fun i I want it to be fun yeah yeah i love all the packaging and design part that's part of my background as well i was gonna say yeah design background i mean i've i noticed that was one of the first things that i noticed when looking at your work is the typography i mean i'm a graphic designer i have a typography background i have a design background and that's almost i appreciate that almost as much as the portrait art because the layout of some of these things and the hand done lettering it People don't realize how hard that is to get it to look right, you know. Thank you. Um, so, so I do appreciate that, and I could, I, I still, I saw it from a mile away, man. I recognize that you have that background. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That was before I started illustrating full time. Uh, I was doing graphic design work, and then just in designing my own promotional materials over the years, and doing the odd book cover design for this and that, keeping a hand in that. Mm-hmm. But I, I just love type design. I love working with that and integrating it with, you know, that's along with the aspects of the glove that I talked about that takes you as a viewer to a particular time and place in baseball history. If I can marry that with type from that era, yeah. wow, you got all these layers building up. You're like, zoom, it's a time machine Exactly to that. And I mean, it's painstaking. If it was on a flat surface, it would be painstaking on a piece of leather that's like moving and undulating. And I want it to read uh, properly, at least from one angle. Because a lot of times if you look at a glove from the side. You're playing with the lighting, you're playing with the shape and dimension of it. Yeah, so it gets tricky. And, you know, there's a lot of different um, um, aspects to creating the design for a glove to make it work and to kind of create that hierarchy of, where I want the viewer's eye to go. I don't want the type to compete with the face or, you know, that's, that's just, that's straight up graphic design kind of mentality. And I think it's fun. It's just, I feel like this making these 
I get to tap into my interests and my strengths as an illustrator and designer. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And that's, that's why I love reaching out to, to people. And that's why I'm doing this is really for my passion and my love for art and design and my love for the hobby and for the sport, um, all sports really. But, um, to, to get the opportunity to meet people like you who do something so unique is, is pretty rare. And, you know, to have the, the, the opportunity to, to speak with you and to let people know your story. Um, I, I really do appreciate you taking the time for hopping on with me, but I do have one more question for you. Okay, um, so. what advice would you give to young artists? coming up in the industry that are trying to break through, that are struggling and ready to give up? What, what kind of advice would you give to those people? What I did from the beginning and, and what I think is different and the approach that I have to take that's different and what I would advise to younger artists or artists starting is to go there, wherever there is. It's a pain in the rear to load up a, a backpack full of art supplies and gloves and all the paraphernalia needed to be at an event yeah but go there the very first thing i did i had such a good such good fortune i reached out to a former gm who loved my work from a, a blind email that i found him on linkedin but we had some mutual overlap he loved my work and he said he was going to be at the winter meetings in Nashville. This was in 2012. So I booked a plane flight to Nashville and I just hung out in the lobby. I got a clear tote bag and I had a bunch of gloves. Right. So right. I walked, I walked the lobby with about four gloves in this clear bag and people were like, what's that? What's that? So I didn't have an invite. I just showed up and I met him. He handed me off to several journalists going to spring training, going to the national, mm -hmm. going uh, like now I've got a relationship with the hall of fame in Canada. I showed up at the event this past summer where Pedro Martinez was inducted and I had a booth there. And that makes so much difference, especially for artists like myself and uh, others in the field. People want to see your things firsthand, hold it, touch it, completely agree with you 100%. You have to put in the effort, you have to hustle, you have to know the struggle, right? I mean, yeah. it, that you have to be able to appreciate that because building your network is one of the most important things in any business, really. I'm mm -hmm. making connections, making personal connections with people and developing those relationships, building your network. You're never going to be able to express Expand your horizons. You're never going to be able to try something new if you don't put yourself out there, right? Meet yep. new people, go to different places. So I completely agree 100%. That's something that I, I kind of preach when I do mentorships and things like that yep. with young design students. You have to be, you have to be present, like you said. Otherwise, you're going yep. to get lost in the shuffle. There is so much content out there, right? That mm -hmm. you have to separate yourself. And nowadays, separating yourself means actually meeting somebody in person. So. It does. It totally does. And, and again, going back to like the fun quote quotient of it, being with other people and, and meeting them, it, it's just fun. Like you get in these, in these rooms and, you know, if you're at the national or at a spring training or a fantasy camp event, everybody loves the same thing you love. Yeah. And they probably know, at least in my case, they know a heck of a lot more about it than I do. So I can learn a lot and, and you never know when those connections are going to come in handy later on down the oh, road, right? I mean, planting seeds that take years to germinate, and and you, you're right, they never. And one, I can I can connect the dots from projects I've done for the Phillies, half a dozen projects, back to being there in person at a particular place. And I mean, that's just it's it's. Uh, it's like the success story that's right out there for everybody to follow. Just got to get on a plane and make the effort, you know, and show up. So definitely. Yeah. Well, well, thank you for showing up today, even though it's not in person, yeah. you know, we it's were face to face somewhat. Thing. So yeah, next best thing. I, where can people find you if they are familiar with your work? How can they get in touch with you and where can they find your work? Yeah. Two best ways would be uh, my website is Sean Kane, baseball art.com or any of the social media sites, it's at Painted Gloves. Easy enough, That's right? It. Easy <laughs> enough. I'm there. Shoot Excellent. me a DM or send me an email and uh, happy to chat or answer a question or show me what 
show me your gloves. I don't care. Absolutely, man. If you're ever in Philadelphia, hit me up. We're going to get together. I'll buy you a beer. And, uh, Look forward to it. All right, Sean, thank Thanks, you so Sam. much for hopping on, man. I appreciate it. We'll talk Take soon. Care. All right, bye-bye. Okay. Bye.